First Start Let's Chat, Session 54, an Athletic Therapy Roundtable, starting off 2021 with a really special um, episode or session here with four guests um, explaining the student experience from across the globe. So uh, before we even get going, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. We're experiencing uh, all three uh, fashions of the day here. Uh, we are ranging from the West Coast of Canada all the way over to Ireland, and we'll have our uh, student experts here in a minute introduce themselves and, and start the rundown of what their experience has been like in the AT world um, through the pandemic, but uh, finding the profession and, and a bunch of other valuable tools. They are the future of our profession and the future of the performance space, not for any added pressure in the session, but uh, always good to hear from students and, and sort of have them lead the way. So that's how we're going to start off 2021. As always, brought to you by Mobility Tape, the only heat activated kinesiology tape on the market and First Star Therapy. Uh, just a reminder, as we start 2021, membership is available for CATA members. That is $10 a month, which gets you 1.6 CEUs based off the quizzes um, that have been and that will be uh, unlocked with membership. Uh, that's 10 bucks a month, 1.6 CEUs. Jump on it. You can get through that uh, under courses, firststartherapy.com. Uh, and secondary to that, just want to let everybody know that we have released our October seminar, The Shot You Don't Want to Take, which is uh, a seminar on mental health and addiction in the sports space. That's now on the YouTube channel. First Star Let's Chat is the YouTube channel uh, available publicly. The full presentation, questions, uh, PowerPoint, all of the entire uh, things start to finish. The audio version also available here via podcast. So appreciate everybody's uh, time in listening to that. Let's get into the real good stuff here. Uh, our student panel made up of Taryn, Adam, Mike, and Zach will go. Uh, let's start over in Ireland with Taryn. Let you say hello and what year you're in and, and where you're studying. Hi. Yeah. So I'm in year two, uh, second year in IT Carlo. And I'm studying athletic therapy and sports rehab. And do you want me to uh, no background? that's fine no that's yeah. fine that's great we'll come back around to your background just want to get yeah. your year and and where you are so uh taryn is a canadian implant in ireland let's go to our irishman in ireland adam you're up hi so i'm from wexford in ireland and i'm in the same class as taryn i'm in second year in sports rehab in carlo as well Beautiful. So we'll get to that and we'll, we'll explore what Carlo is all about and how the program looks uh, through you two. Obviously, Mike, let's head over to the West Coast, uh, I think, in Ontario implant in BC, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I'm a fourth year student at Camosun, uh, okay. just going into my last semester and the real world starts after that. Scary you stuff. <laughs> you're, already, you're already in it and, and yeah. we appreciate you being here. Uh, Zach, last but not least, man, give us your, uh, your year and where you're at. Hey guys, um, so I currently live in Waterdown and I go to Sheridan. Um, I'm in my third year there and experiencing the COVID world, not so much the real world. <laughs> <laughs> it is the real world and it is what it is and we'll just keep making the best of it. So appreciate you guys being on here to, to be our, our guest and our panel on here today, this evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, obviously, we're going global with this one, which is uh, which is amazing. So um, a little bit of reach over there in the UK and uh, in Ireland with you two, uh, Taryn and Adam, and then across Canada from coast to coast almost uh, with Mike and Zach. So um, Taryn, I'm going to come back around to you and just we'll go in the same sort of order um how did you find at and what is sort of your your passion or or what is the area of focus for you at this point in in second year over there so i found it i was like i grew up with huge background with sports and everything and with my own injury i like became intrigued with the idea of sports medicine and that kind of led towards athletic therapy and helping people and being that part of medicine right so I took a year off um kind of just to see what I wanted to do and the comp plan and I found uh, Mount Royal their program but their program is so competitive and it's very um it just at that time it was a better option just to look more to see what was out there sure and so um I was looking at the mutual agreement that uh, CAD has with the U.S. and Ireland, and that was what kind of brought me towards Ireland and wanting to study more and just reach beyond the borders kind of thing. Amazing. And so, yeah, so I found out that um, IT Carlo has kind of an agreement with Mount Royal, which comes in handy, too. And, yeah, so that's where I am now in my second year, and I plan to do my full bachelor degree here and most likely my master's as well. 
Amazing. So, That's amazing. Yeah. And, and you get not only the AT experience, but you get uh, the international experience too. Yeah. So um, something that I think you're the only one here that is international in a, in a different country uh, than, <laughs> than you're originally from. So some cool experiences that we'll pick your brain on as well. Any differences or things that you've noticed in, in sort of that transition? Uh, Adam, how about you? Where, where did you find uh, athletic therapy, athletic training? What do they call it in Ireland specifically? Uh, and what's your sort of area of focus right now? So I, like growing up as well, like Taryn, I came from a very sporting family. So like my dad and my granddad would play a lot of GAA. So when I was growing up, like a young Irish lad, you were kind of forced into the GAA. Um, I wasn't the best at it. So when I, two years ago, I kind of took a coaching approach to it and I started coaching kids in GAA. And kind of from that, then when I was leaving school, I like science and I like sport from coaching and stuff. And I said, sure, I went and to different classes for like what to do when you leave school. And I found physio and I found a tech therapy and I picked Carlo just because it's only like less than an hour away from my house. I'm not as exciting as Taryn going across the world or anything, but I'm kind of a home bird. So I kind of said n- nearby. Yeah, also important. And I think sort of uh, a lot of people in the same boat. So again, having you on, thank you guys very much, all of you. And for everybody who's here live and everybody picking this up, I think it's really important to share your experience, right? We all talked about this and we all know that you're your own ex- you're your own expert in your life and your experience. So sharing this, we're going to have relatable material for everybody else. So really appreciate that. And so far some, you know, going across the, uh, across the ocean and then just going next door, both, both valuable experiences. Um, Mike, how about you over there on the West coast at Camosun? And I said it right this time yeah uh yeah i got into athletic therapy kind of uh by chance i guess so i got i did a a degree in canada at ottawa u and i kind of just you know after high school was like okay well university is the next step uh got into that um again i had an athletic background i played rugby so i played for the ottawa u and we uh i met kathleen gauthier uh she was the athletic therapist at algonquin college uh and so i got to do my internship in fourth year with her uh, and she got me onto the path. Um, then after I graduated, I went to Edmonton, worked for a bit and tried to do continuing kind of courses. Uh, I really wanted to get, like, I thought I was going to get into physio. That's just kind of like, you know, next step after kin, you're like, kin, physio, boom. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I got waitlisted. So I was like, okay, well, what do I do in the interim? Uh, and then looked around, looked around, saw the Mount Royal program. And then um, a buddy of mine told me that Victoria was the best place in the world. So I was like, ah, why not try that out? <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's how I wound up on the island and got into the bait program uh, here. And yeah, haven't looked back. It's been fantastic. Absolutely love it. Oh man, and 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 some worldly experience already. You know, going from Ontario to BC, also relying on your buddy to tell you that that is, uh, you know, the best place on earth, which it might be, unless you're over there in Carlo uh, with those two. I'm not sure we can have that battle later on, but uh, uh, awesome share, man, and uh, glad you're enjoying it. And I love that it's so raw that this is almost like a, um, uh, I don't want to say fallback, but a plan that didn't work out, but is now working out beautifully. And I and I I feel the passion in talking to you about what athletic therapy is and can be. And uh, I know a couple of the people out there at Camosun and and, uh, each one of the students on here today has been recommended by either a professor, a colleague, a friend, somebody you study with. I've done my background research um, to get high quality people who uh, who really embody what it is to be a student and, and moving towards um, a professional in this space. So again, thank thank you for your time as well. And I know it's the morning there. So hope you've had breakfast. We'll hunker in here for uh, about an hour or so and, and get through this. But uh, Zach, you're up, man. Um, you're in Ontario. Tell us a little bit about how you found AT and, and where it's brought you to date. So um, kind of similar to Mike, I uh, always had a, a, like a sporty background growing up, watching sports, playing sports, um, went to University of Windsor, following my mom's footsteps, thinking I was going to go into sport management, actually. And then while I was there, um, kind of had a change of heart because my roommate became a student therapist with the hockey team. So kind of prod his brain a little bit, found out that this was an opportunity, had a lot of buddies on the volleyball team there, um, got in with their volleyball team for my final two years. And kind of just grew f- with my experience there. It wasn't very good my first year with them. S- started to excel in my second year, found out about Sheridan, and uh, here I am in my third year at Sheridan. So it was just kind of a out of the nowhere, not really knowing what athletic therapy was, always seeing that person run onto the field, or run onto the court, and thinking, man, that's cool, and then realizing that it's a career I can do. So um, it was kind of out of the blue, um, but just something that I found very interesting, and just I started to excel, and so I decided to take a chance. 
Awesome. And, and, and another life lesson, uh, you know, sort of relying on the experience of others, which you are all providing today. So again, Zach, thank you for your time. And, and we're really going to share this forum and sort of go back and forth. But before we get to that, um, Adam, you kept saying GA and just for clarity of the audience, that's, that's the Gaelic uh, athletics or Gaelic yeah. association, right? Can you give us a little rundown on, on what that is? And um, just for clarity on our side of the pond. So like when I, in in Wexford, my club in Monagir Bula Vogue, it's um, a more of a hurling club. Like there's Gaelic football as well, but I would be more hurling and football. Whereas there's also handball, which is like another sport. I wouldn't know much about handball. I'd be more Wex or Wexford is more kind of a hurling county. So hurling would be my thing. It's it's the sport with the stick. It's kind of like hockey, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like hockey, kind of like golf, and it's and like in the air as well, though. So it's kind of a mixture. Yeah, and tons of good good videos out there uh, on the internet too for times uh, of a pandemic. You can watch a bunch of hurling and things like this. But uh, a good share, and we'll just get some clarity on that. Um, come back around to sort of some of the student experiences. Adam, um, you're in second year at uh, IT Carlo, right? So uh, what does that look like for you? Um, what is your classes? Uh, what do your classes look and feel like uh, right now in the pandemic? Where is the focus of study? And do you have placements currently or how is that look? Looking, uh, as things work so placement I don't think happens until the second semester of third year so we haven't done much of a like we haven't been out on our own a lot like this year has been a lot different to like first year where like due to COVID we'd be a lot of Zoom classes I wouldn't particularly like it as much because with a course like elect therapy it's a lot of hands-on stuff so I feel like we're suffering when it comes to stuff like this like Zoom is great, but it it's not great for interacting with lectures and stuff unless you feel confident enough to talk in front of the 90 people that's in our course. Um, in our course, there's 90 people, but in my class, there's only 17. And then again, we were divided into pods of seven this year. So very, very minimal amount of people. And like when you go to a, like Carlo is a very small college. Like when I went to school, I always were, was in small schools of like five people in my class. Mm -hmm. So it was like so welcoming to go to a college where you were nearly like a family between like the 17 people that were in your class and you, everyone knows everyone. So it's great. Yeah, no, beautiful. And, and just to sort of give us an overview of things, I think that paints a, a very nice picture. And um, we'll talk, Mike, to you about Kamosin and, and Zach, to you about how it feels at Sheridan as well through um, through COVID. But also, I like that idea that sort of like that communal feel, right? You feel like you're a part of something as soon as you get into a program. It's not a massive program, although it could be housed at a massive school or uh, depending what your, I guess, your your version of a massive school. I mean, you tripled your class size and that, so that must feel a little bit... Uh, a little bit overwhelming, at least to begin, but um, it's great to have you on. Uh, Taryn, how about you? you? You transitioned from Alberta, right? And now you're living in Ireland. So um, how has that transition been for you? You're in your second year. You're in a pandemic. Uh, how are things for you on your end uh, in the AT field? It's it's definitely different. It's um, just the transition between like a small town east of Calgary to moving across the world to Carlo. Like it's surreal experience right but during this pandemic like for christmas i wasn't able to see my family right where like last year i was able to fly back home so it's definitely a challenge that way but thank like thank god for zoom and facetime and like all the new te like technology right but even with athletic therapy it kind of opens your eyes to see like um what the challenges for us we have like um, being able to have the hands-on experience to um, communicate with our like with athletes a little bit more and because they're at home and we're somewhere else it's it's definitely a challenge but it's a challenge that we're um, at, like adapting to and we're able to overcome so I mean it's it is what it is and you kind of have to adapt to improvise and everything so yeah, no, that's, I think it's, it's, it's the reality, right? The reality of this is that we can't do all the things we want to do, all the things that we're used to doing so we can mm -hmm. hunker down with what we have and, and try to make the best of it. I'm sure being across the, the world is, is, uh, is not the same as being across a city or across a town, but at the same time, 
during these times, it sort of is. So, um, you know, you have a nice small community there, must feel, does it feel like, uh, like Adam uh, mentioned as well to you, um, mm-hmm. like a family there, the small class sizes and how does oh, yeah, that feel? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, very home welcoming kind of thing. So it's nice that uh, way. Uh, amazing, amazing stuff. Um, Mike, out there on the West Coast, you you are uh, an implant, right, from Ontario and, and sometimes not received so well in BC, to my understanding. Uh, but hey, you're there and not you personally, but Ontario, you know, and uh, how are things out there with the Camosun program working through the pandemic? Uh, how is that for, for you and your experience to this point? Yeah, for sure. Just just to touch on the Ontario thing, the the, the new term I picked up from being out here is the uh, is, is unterrible. So that's the one that everyone tells me about. Um, I've heard I've heard on scario before. Oh, that's yeah, good yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, yeah, I, it's I don't know. It's it's been a change. Obviously, uh, going from Ottawa U was you know massive class sizes and a general program to Camosun, uh, where our class sizes are like thirty. So. Again, it's it's kind of like what what Adam and Taren are saying. It's such a small kind of tight knit community, and I absolutely love it. I mean, you're not just a number anymore. You're you're an actual person. I know all of my professors or teachers uh, by their first name, and and they all know mine. Like anytime you have a, a communication thing you want to do, you just, you can walk up either talk to them, drop them an email or whatever, and they always respond so fast. Like it's just great being uh, being either appreciated a but also being seen, uh, and I absolutely love that. And, uh, and to touch on what Taryn said too, like with, with COVID, uh, with the kind of the changes, um, it's taught us all, I think a really valuable lesson in that, like things won't go to plan forever. You know, I mean, even if you have the most well laid out thing, like you're, I'm going to, we're going to do this and this and this and this, and this is how I'm going to get my job. Like it, it just doesn't work that way. And so the amount of variability in our, in our future is, is something we're going to have to always contend with. And I think that's a really valuable lesson for, for anyone going through COVID is that like, change is just going to happen and you're going to have to respond to it. And that's just crucial going forward. Sure. And then, and then the foundational pieces that you're laying through the knowledge and the understanding of how to do things online and maybe uh, gravitating towards, you know, some remote healthcare options and things like that, um, where travel is either going to resume or resume to a lesser capacity than it was in the past, you know, reaching more people this way. Um, Have you felt like accessibility to knowledge um, has been, you know, enhanced through this for you and, and your end, or has it sort of, has it been tough to navigate? It's, it's been a bit of both. So I have always been like a really tactile learner. I'm sure like many people in the program, like you want to get your hands on something and just kind of feel and see what it looks like. Um, but I found out that going through like online classes, it's, it just teaches you to, to listen a lot more, uh, which is also a pretty valuable skill for me, at least. Um, the thing that I kind of like about it is even if you're uh, we have a couple recorded lectures for us. Like there are, there are live stream lectures, which is great. And there are a couple recorded ones, which I actually kind of like a little bit better just because I can do whatever I need to, you know, clean in the house or making breakfast, wherever it's kind of like a podcast. You just put on your headphones and you're listening to the information. You kind of absorb it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of an, it's, it's hard to say that's kind of a passive way to learn, but still an effective one. I think if you do it right. Um, but it is obviously challenging. I mean, it's not going to work for everybody. Um, I don't know. It's, it's hard to, um, like I said, get the practical experience. Absolutely. But it's nice to get the, the, uh, like the background education a bit more like that, the reasons of why we do things. And it's kind of the thing that we delve more into now, which is kind of nice for us. I mean, uh, you're going to have to learn that. Uh, Absolutely. I think those pieces are are definitely the struggle that's very real and and very real for, you know, practitioners who are certified already, who are missing, who are just fresh out of school, who haven't quite graduated yet or or have just recently graduated that that gap, right? It's like that learning gap between um, what you've learned and how you're going to apply it in whatever space you're in, in the school Mm -hmm. or the professional space. If you're sort of locked out of your job or locked out of those, those hands-on skills, it makes it very, very difficult. And I don't think that's anything we can overlook. Um, But at the same time, again, coming back around to sort of the base of this knowledge uh, that we've all sort of touched on, I think to this point is grabbing as much as we can in this moment and doing what we can with it. So um, appreciate that. Appreciate the share. Zach, we'll slide over to you. Um, your go. Give us your rundown. So um, right now, like like everybody, we're in such a state of change. But um, normally it would be a year where we're uh, going back, doing a semester of placement, uh, first semester field, and second semester going and working in a clinic, um, just kind of shadowing. 
Um, but right now it's just so, uh, so up in the air. We, we don't have any, any field experience, especially with our school being in Brampton, Brampton being such a, uh, hot spot. It's, it's been such a, a change. We go to class, our small labs twice a week, uh, mm -hmm. And when we go, our labs have been split up. There's 15 people in our lab about, and even that's been split into half. So we're getting videoed into the other half. A prof might be on one side teaching the lab. And then on the other side, we're getting videoed in with a TA there. Um, so that's kind of how it's kind of changed for us in the, the school year with the learning. Um, but there's just been so many different ways that we can actually soak up and change the way that we're learning right now too. Um, for me, like it's, I've been able to personally self-reflect a lot more than I did before. I, I, I personally, a big extrovert, try to like take everything off of everybody else and just like talk to everybody. Um, but I've been able to just like internally try and learn, change the way I'm learning, adjust different things with myself and see where my weaknesses are. And although we're not getting that, that hands-on experience that we did before, um, I think it's a big way that we're really going to, I, I personally am able to learn the, the nitty gritty of everything a little bit in more detail and try and grow from it. And then any experience that I do get, whether it's with a TA in lab or with talking to other students about their experiences from last year. Um, and our profs have had a, done a really good job of trying to force us to reflect and on our experience before and how we can continue to grow our skills. Um, I think that's been a huge help and a uh, way that I can, I, I've personally been growing this year through this kind of strange time we're in. Yeah, no, a great share. And, and I think uh, all of those things, we talked as a group uh, a couple of days ago. And and one of the things that, that we all agreed upon is, is you guys are going through something that nobody else has gone through. And as you navigate this space, you're going to come out on the other end with some elevated um, levels of either creativity or understanding. And, and the things that you're missing or you feel like you're missing, if you've never experienced them, I mean, you're okay. It's like my five-year-old, he's never experienced anything different than going to kindergarten. I mean, well, going to kindergarten in Canada with a mask on. On, right like this is all he's experienced so he, this is normal for him and so although yes you're missing some of those pieces with the hands-on things i mean i hope before the end of your 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 scholastic career, you're getting those before you get out into the field. Um, but you're developing a lot of different skills, uh, communication, uh, navigating this space, and, and you're going to provide a lot for us who, who have been through school and are now doing this uh, on the other end, you know, and trying to navigate this and saying, what's this going to look like? I feel like there's going to be uh, a heavy lean on the students that are coming out and not no pressure again. But um, I think that's advantageous for you as well, right? You, you just navigate it as best you can. And, and, and we do the same and then hopefully at the other side we come out with something but if there is another side obviously like it's going to be a transition it's not just going to one day stop and flip but um where let's change gears a little bit here where where do you see yourself zach let's just wind this backwards so taryn you'll have a long haul here uh but zach where do you see yourself in this profession in terms of looking forward and the reason i ask this question is because when i was in school um there were three options for jobs you know the, the mindset for most of us as students was i'm going to own my own clinic and not to say that any of these are bad i'm going to own my own clinic, I'm going to work in pro sports, um, or I'm going to take uh, uh, that professor's job, right? And those were the three areas. And then what this platform through a lot of the conversations that I've uh, been um, privy to and hosted and gathered and all of these things and reflected upon through my career is that there's a lot of space in between those three professions. And the idea very much is to have students and have uh, therapists and, and people in the performance space navigate that a little bit differently, hopefully based off of some of these experiences that everybody's sharing in the profession. Um, where do you see yourself or do you see yourself um, within the AT sp uh, space moving forward? Um, me personally, I'm still kind of in an area of trying to figure that out. Um, for so long, after I especially go going into Sheridan, I really liked the idea of a varsity clinic. I liked the idea of the team environment, whether um, it was like working in a clinic or just working with an individual team. I really liked the idea of being part of the team, specifically just because I've been around that for so long. Um, but now, like kind of just looking at other options, talking to other people, it's really just starting to open my eyes on like just different areas that I can go. Um, one thing that always did draw me towards the varsity clinic was the idea of being able to not necessarily like it being a varsity clinic, having constant, uh, like people coming into the clinic, like, like you're going to have a clientele, like not all of, like the stuff that like people kind of look at that, but more like the teaching people, the way that I was kind of helped up. Like I know like, the, the staff at Windsor 
I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them kind of opening my eyes into the field. And I think that's kind of something that draws me toward me towards trying to like help other people that are trying to grow through the field. So like that teaching part of it, I think that was like something that's really got me hooked into this actual Mm -hmm. career choice. So that's kind of something that I'm kind of looking at, but then I really don't know where I might end up. I'm just open to any opportunity and just trying to run with it. Sure. And I think those are, those are great uh, responses. And, and again, I'm, I'm, this isn't a pressure cooker. This isn't a question to sort of put you on the spot. It's just to sort of navigate, you know, where do we see ourselves in this profession uh, in this, from a student experience, where do you see uh, opportunity or where do you see, um, you know, yourself, maybe or yourself or, or the profession as a whole, Mike, um, how about you? Not that you have a defined space that you want to be in. Um, let's go a little bit broader with you. Uh there's opportunity in this profession to work with any human being um, because we're gaining skills along the way that allow us to do so. Um, coming at it from that end, there's sort of limitless potential. Where do you figure or where do you see yourself as you navigate sort of fourth year and coming to the end of your academic career um, and your experience, obviously playing and, and working with teams and things like that? Where do you see uh, this profession going either for yourself or, or how do you see this profession as a whole? Yeah, for sure. Um, I always thought that I would do, you know, like everything like pro sports, I'm going to be on the sidelines of some rugby team and, and I'm going to love it. Um, but now the more I've been in school, I've noticed that it's not overly the thing I want. I got a, an opportunity to do a placement at uh, at Brentwood college. It's like a, it's a like a pre- private high school. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's not one of those three pillars. It wasn't the clinic. It wasn't a pro sports team and it wasn't like someone else's job. So it was a kind of a cool experience to get. I mean, I understand people don't like high school, high schoolers or they don't like kids or whatever it is, but I actually really relished it. I mean, I loved being on the sidelines for the kids. I loved the opportunity of being in the clinic. It gave me variability because I got to see all these different sports teams throughout the year. Um, but I also really liked the educational component to it. I mean, these kids are impressionable. They're young and they, and they want to learn. They also want to get back from their injuries, you know? So anytime you give them a any, anything to do you rolled your ankle okay do these exercises blah 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 blah, and they're like they come back and they're eager to do it right. um, but also it's an opportunity to give them prevention education you know like next time you're doing this this and this will change these three things and going forward in your life this is going to be much more valuable for you yes. uh, and i think that's a, a great place to have an impact is is with the youth of tomorrow you know so sure. I, I really like sorry go ahead no no you go keep going okay yeah, yeah. um yeah so i really like that opportunity um I, I also thought that coming into it again, like loving the field aspect, loving the sidelines thing. I like being part of a team, like a, like I said, a rugby player. So I've always kind of been in that tight knit community for it. So I was like, well, if I'm part of a team, it'll be something similar. Um, so I never really thought I'd really like the clinical aspect of it too much. I know it's part of the job, but I always thought it'd be like the least favorite part of the job. Uh, and then this year I got to do uh, a clinical placement with, uh, with uh, an athletic director, Matt Lumsdane here. And he's, he was incredibly taught me so much. Um, and I really have way more respect for the clinical aspect of it. It's, it's more of a problem solving thing, which I, which I quite like. Yeah. Um, but I think going forward that, that high school kind of age group is, is where I want to be. I, but again, it, it's open. I'm, <laughs> it'll kind of see where I end up. Uh, as we all know, this, this, this career path isn't very linear. <laughs> so I'm going to have to just kind of be open to whatever comes around. Sure. And I think, again, coming back to the foundational pieces, right, there's sort of uh, a metaphor in emergency planning and doing your EAP and and understanding that, like, you can have a framework for everything that you want to do, but there's always going to be things that get thrown at you and the path is, you're correct, like non-linear completely. (laughs) Uh, I was going to be a few things and and I got to do some of them and experience some of them and then a 360 and a 180 and a backwards (laughs) and a background again. Um, And here we are, but uh, I love the amateur space. and, And if you haven't listened to it yet, there's a session on here with Dr. Luciano DiNardo, who's an MD. I had the opportunity to work with his daughters um, through their ACL rehabs. They both tore their ACLs, both soccer players, both uh, 14 and and 16 when it happened to those two. Um, And he had uh, laid out basically a plan of like how and why there is uh, a need for athletic therapy and and some action to happen in the amateur space. And I I think that that is an area that, um, although maybe not 
hogging the glory spotlight like pro sport does, there is a whole lot more value in being able to provide learning, understanding, knowledge, and impact in those lower levels. Because then when they get to pro, they already have that understanding from somebody like yourself or, or Zach or Adam or Taryn when, you, when we get out into the field. Um, we're educating at grassroots, quote unquote, and then that builds and elevates so that we're not fighting that battle of this hip that doesn't work properly at 24, but I'm playing in the NHL, right? So um, anyway, the, the great points, great discussion points, great shares, both you guys. Uh, we'll work our way backwards. So Adam, I know you guys are in your sort of your early years. You're in your second year of a program. You may not have a, 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 an aspiration of a specific goal. Um, are there people out there that you've seen in the athletic therapy field uh, in Ireland, or do you see space in Ireland to sort of build this profession a little bit more broadly? Um, so like when I finished school, like it was always up in the air what I wanted to do. Like through my whole life, I wanted to be a teacher and there was nothing stopping me from being a teacher. And then near the end of school, I kind of took the athletic therapy approach to things. I looked into it, really enjoyed what it, it looked like. Um, I enjoy the course now. I was more sure what I wanted to do after college than I am now. I feel like after coming, this is my second year now, there's so much more than just, as you said, the academic approach, joining a team or having your own clinic. Like I wanted all three of them things. I no, I wanted like a team more so at the start. And now I don't, I don't really know what I want. And then like listening to like your podcast, I think I'm getting the name right, Victoria Swan. Like just listening to her and what yeah. she's doing now. Mm -hmm. Be Becky Swan and, Becky and, Swan and she's with, with the police department in Vancouver. Yeah. And then there's Victoria Cleary, who's doing military work uh, as well. But both great ones. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mixture then. <laughs> um, but just different people like that, that, you know, you just listen to their stories and you're thinking, wow, like I would love something like that. I don't know, like the reason why I'm coaching and stuff is because as Mike and Zach said about team being part of a team, it's great to be part of a team. And like the young lads had always become up to you. Oh, this is hurt me. This is hurt. And it's like such a nice thing to be able to say, Oh, this is how you fix it and stuff. I know I'm only in my second year, but you know, a bit like for stretching and stuff. So it's like nice to kind of give back to like a team and be part of it. Look, I don't know where I'll be in two years time or three years time. I could be doing a master's. I might not be. I don't know yet. Uh, awesome. I, I think it's a, a, a raw and a very real response. And But you bring up a great point as well. And it's not that look at that. I want to have what she has, but it's that you can create it. She's created that by navigating the space, by not probably not knowing in her second year um, where she was going to be or what she wanted to do, right? Moving into the future. So I think not knowing, and all of you have said, I'm not quite sure. And that's, that's, that's the answer, right? Like we don't have to be so sure of everything along the way. We just keep following the, the, the channels of learning, right? And knowledge and growth and, and really, you know, uh, massaging the clay that we are into what we want to be, you know, as we move along. There is no definitive answer. Trust me, I was going to work in professional baseball. I did that. I know I'm the furthest thing from working in professional sports now um, and navigating every day, following sort of like passion and, and doing this as, as part of it and, and really trying to navigate the space myself, right? right? It might look like like I know, but I don't know. I've been at this 15 years and I still don't know, but I know that there is uh, a collaborative approach that's necessary. I know that having conversation is necessary and doing things like this goes a long, long way. So I appreciate your, uh, your willingness to share. Um, Taryn, how about you in terms of uh, um, your understanding of the profession and how it's received in Alberta and you have this dual sort of role and how it's received in Ireland. Um, what's your take on how athletic therapy is perceived in both countries? Um, well, I think, I don't know, like, for Ireland, it's so, um, just, people are open. Like, I'm not sure about Alberta, because I was never able to get that aspect of everything. But for Ireland, like, everything's so, um, I'm not sure, like, it's just this real, like, different, whole different world, I guess, over here. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Different ways. Like there's some muscles that I've learned over here that they say differently than people in Canada. Right. Okay. So there's different yep. little things like that, but it's just, it's in some aspects, it's very similar and others are just the different sports that you will work with or different um, clinics or like different peoples. And like, it's just, it's same uh, in some ways, but it's also 
totally different than others. So sure. Is, is the is the profession and, and maybe Adam, if you want to jump in too, but Taryn, do, do you feel like the profession there is known in Ireland? People know what an athletic therapist is. If you say I'm an athletic therapist, do people understand? Do people follow what that might mean? I th- um, I think so. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people will get confused with the physiotherapists and, as well, yeah. because, but it's, um, for the most part, I think people are catching on, like, as it grows in, in later years, it'll grow. More people will understand, like, the difference between, oh, I'm a physiotherapist, between an athletic therapist, right? So it's definitely sure. uh, grown a lot more, I think. Okay. And Adam, Adam, growing up there, did you know athletic therapists sort of like you knew what that was um, coming through there sort of in sporting realms? Like I would have known like physio as a, like there's there so many physios like close to my home and stuff, but I wouldn't sure. have known the term athletic therapy as much. Like if I was to try to explain to someone that doesn't know, like maybe like a relation of mine, I just say a sports physio rather than saying athletic therapy and stuff like this, because it, I just kind of dumb it down to, you know, it's kind of physio in the sports, if you get me. But (laughs) but I I didn't know the term when I was little. I just knew that there was a guy that ran out onto the pitch. That's all I knew what a physio was. And I, when I was in school, I did, um, I did placement. We had in, when there's a year called fourth year transition year, and you get to go on like placement to different places and stuff. And I went to the hospital in Wexford and I, like I seen a fit, like I met physios down there and I didn't know that there was physios like in hospitals. I just, it was oblivious to me, like that, that was a thing. So I thought that a physio was more just someone who ran out onto the pitch if someone was down and it's so much more than that. Yeah, a- absolutely. And I, and I think just sort of understanding that and navigating this space over here, um, it brings me to sort of the next part of where I want to go with this. And I didn't really prep you for this intentionally. Um, the collaborative approach, right? As we go through school, we understand what our role is as an athletic therapist. We understand how well developed we are in certain skills and certain realms and certain aspects. Um, have there been opportunities or will there be opportunities or do you feel that opportunities are necessary to work amongst other professions as part of your learning as well? Um, Zach, we'll start with you and then come back over to Ireland and then jump over to the West Coast, Mike, uh, uh, for you at the end. Um, me pers- Am I? can you hear me? Yeah, me personally, um, I really think it's going to be a huge thing to be like have to be able to collaborate with other professions. There's a lot of things that um, us as like future athletic therapists are going to be more confident in, very just strong skill based in. But like, personally speaking, like when it comes to nutrition, like nutrition is not going to be like a, a huge point that I'm going to be like very like knowledgeable on. So that's going to be like times when I, I'm going to have to grow from other people that might be surrounding me and reach out to people that I know that might be in a different profession that know more about nutrition in this case, like being able to work with that medical team, like as a whole, um, I think we all have the same end goal as getting athlete a back out onto the field or back out onto the ice like why not all work together as one big team to try and help the same end goal as opposed to saying i want all the responsibility because i can do a better job there's things that a lot of people aren't going to be or that will do a lot better than i will be able to do so why not let them do it and grow from them prod their brain try and gain some knowledge from that team because if we can all be really good at something and then like like are really good at everything, but experts at one thing, why don't we let the expert do what they're really good at and be really good at everything else, um, like to help them. There are great, great talking points. And, um, you know, I, I just went back and, and watched, rewatched and listened to uh, the seminar on mental health. And one thing that I that I think you've drawn on is that we don't have to be everything to everybody, but we do sort of need to understand all those different areas and understand where an expert, where expertise may be needed and where we do need to have a little bit of understanding of nutrition. And if that's an area of weakness, we either enhance our understanding of nutrition or we find somebody that we can refer to. And this is what I'm trying to navigate. Navigate and, and I hope.
hope I can coach into uh, students as well as we move through and practitioners, right? We've had sports physios on here, sports chiros, medical doctors, uh, doctors of orthopedic, athletic trainer, any, any number of people, professional athletes. And what it comes down to is the relationships, uh, the understanding and the ability to have that athlete centered approach, right? And so if I don't know it, I better know somebody who knows it to get the best answer. Um, I think that collaboration is massive. That's also part of the placement opportunity. I think when we go to multidisciplinary clinics, sorry, the dogs are going crazy. It was only a matter of time, but we made it longer. The over under was set at uh, 26 minutes. We're longer than that in. So if you had the uh, over, you win. Um, Adam and Taryn over there in Ireland, do you guys have the opportunity to work amongst other professions? We've talked about physio quite heavily in Europe, right? Obviously in, in Ireland. Um, are, are your placements or do you have placements in the future uh, or in the past or people that you know in the program doing placements with people other than athletic therapists? Go ahead. Adam, go ahead. Um, well, regard to placement, we haven't been on placement as such, so it's kind of, it's hard for me to tell you like whether or not we will or not. But like, as Zach said before, there's, if you're involved with a team and stuff, there's so much more than just the rehab of like an athlete. There's the nutrition, there's dietitians, there's the sports scientists. Like me and Taryn in first year, like, I don't know about Taryn, but me personally, when I seen like the course name rehab, I was thinking like, oh, this is just going to be rehab fully. And that would be it. And like, you got a shock for yourself when you went in and you had to do physics, biology, chemistry, right. uh, sports science, physiology I just I was just like oh my god like I, I thought I'd be just doing like rehab and rehab only and it's only this year that like this semester now we're going to be starting to do like actual rehab stuff so we have like a bit of knowledge let's just say on a few different things that I didn't think I would have had to get knowledge on and even with like when I'm coaching and stuff you'd always have one of the, like the young lads saying like oh what do you think I should eat or how how do you think I should prep for a match and I'm I'm like, oh, like I know a bit, but I don't know like the full, the full circle, if you get me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, Taryn, same thing. Uh, if you know any of the upper years or anybody at, at Carlo later on than you or people who have been through it, are there opportunities or, or is it strictly athletic therapy placement? I think there's, there's so many opportunities just mm -hmm. alone with having um, been over here. Like I could also go back home and have their different opportunities. Right. But here is, um, I think we have the opportunity in fourth year, second semester to go uh, work with uh, MLB and for spring training. And I think like that is just that, like that is incredible. The fact that this tiny little college in um, Carlo is able to go to the States and work with these major sports teams. Right. Yeah. Amazing. Um, but I think, yeah, um, there's definitely a lot more, um, it's not really censored around athletic therapy, but it's the different aspects, like different things that you can take from um, a chiropractor and they you can share between that, right? Like you have a similar mindset in some ways. Yeah, I think it's a beautiful profession. I think it, it leaves us wide open to so many opportunities. It allows us to do, I don't want to say a little bit of chiropractic work, but a little bit of work that everybody does. It, it really, um, our profession allows us to um, maneuver a little bit differently, I think. We can be a liaison to in, in any way, right, to any profession or within any profession. I sort of see us as... Um, uh, a, a central piece and other spokes coming off of it. You know, that's how I view the profession now more than ever. And I think we need to, to continue to build that sort of emphasis on it's not comparing ourselves or we're a physio, but we do this or a chiro that we do this, but it's, here's what we house. And we're more than happy to be the piece that refers onward, right. And, and, and shares the space and, and, uh, and continues to grow. Um, my experience with the ATC and being through the NATA and, and previously being certified that way was there was a little bit more pharmacology in terms of understanding of, of drug usage and drug interaction and these kinds of things in, in that schooling uh, a little bit, maybe um, field-based as opposed to clinical based but that's all shifted since since I came through school so uh, Mike how about you opportunities to share and care and do those things with different professionals there's obvious value in it um, what have things been like for you how do you see that value as a student and, and about to enter the professional world yeah I think the interdisciplinary approach is vital I mean you, you're as one person you're not going to know everything and that's just that's just fact you know uh, there's always going to be someone that knows more than you and, and knowing who those people are is, is absolutely crucial uh, 
for either patients or clients to improve optimally, I should say. Um, that collaboration, that networking pro- key, uh, uh, aspect is absolutely key. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of funny you brought this up. Uh, I remember growing up as a kid, like thinking I was going to be a physio or whatever it was. Like I had a couple other friends that did other healthcare practitioners and, and same thing, like, you know, one's a chiro, one's a physio, one's a uh, massage, one's a whatever. Like they all are in these different things. And I figured like in our hometown, we could open up an interdisciplinary one day. It was like our, our pipe dream uh, of back when we were younger. And I mean, I think going forward, that's still one of the best approaches. If you can have a one-stop shop for clients to come in with whatever injury and, and a bunch of people can kind of take their perspectives on how to improve that person, why not listen to information? Like wh- why shut why shut down good um, advice on how to, how to make someone better? You know, I mean, that's kind of our whole core of our job is like help people improve through, through their injuries. So I think that's an absolutely necessary way to do it. Um, I think as long as you can reduce that competitiveness, I mean, if, if you're in the right amount of people or the, or the right environment, it shouldn't be there. Um, and I think that's the best way to go. Um, but yeah, uh, like in, injuries are, are, are puzzles, right? I mean, the more people you can get helping you to, to solve it, the better you're going to be. So Yeah, so long as we're not muddying the waters, right? And we're sort of just yeah. stir, stirring the pot and, and trying to get to the bottom of it to make uh, something that tastes better than muddy soup. But absolutely, <laughs> I think that interdisciplinary approach is massive. You know, I've had opportunities to be in spaces where um, that was the case, that wasn't the case, that was a focus, that wasn't a focus. And, and sort of 14, 15 years later into the profession, um, you're all spot on. And this opportunity to share, to learn from as many people as possible, to continually grow yourself um, with the focus of of care uh, at the center is massive. I have an opportunity now to work in a, in a gym where I am on the gym floor as a strength and conditioning specialist and athletic therapist where I pull somebody from something that doesn't look right and and tweak and, and move and do some manual stuff and then right back in the squat rack where treatment is no longer seen as this happens behind a closed door and I only go to see him when or her when I'm hurt. I see them all the time because they're a part of this performance space of this wellness space. And I think those are um, critical. I have one more that I want to get to you, to all of you. I have this vision. uh, But before we get there, this is session 54 of First Star Let's Chat and Athletic Therapy Roundtable with our guests, Taryn, Adam, Mike, and Zach, student experience in athletic therapy all the way from uh, Ireland to Ontario here in Canada and then over to the West Coast uh, in British Columbia. Um, Great shares great stories, great experiences, and and all part of um, building this network outward. I think it's crucial to listen to our students. I think it's it drastically uh, under uh, under measured in terms of its value. And, and I think moving forward, the more discussion we can have, uh, the better um, to get a pulse of what's going on, to learn from you and with you and continue to help build this thing and, and, and continue the momentum moving forward. Which leads me to my very last question. Uh, I have this vision of like, doing some, I don't want to say interdisciplinary, but it would be intradisciplinary, uh, matching up something like this, where we have students from different AT programs uh, doing some collaborative work uh, together, doing some collaborative learning. Um, how does that play in your mind? Do you like this idea or you're happy with your own your own pocket? I think it's the, the sharing piece is massive. I don't really know what that vision looks like. I realize it's a general question, but um, do you like this idea of sort of knowing that your profession uh, and your colleagues can be anywhere on the planet. And can we do a better job of sharing that moving forward, I guess, is a better question. Uh, Mike, let's go with you. You're highlighted on my screen. Sure. Um, <laughs> I think this is the year of, if any, to, to, to go exactly down that approach. I mean, everyone's on network stuff because of Zoom anyways. Like, why can't we do stuff like this more often? I mean, you pick a neutral time that it works for everybody. I mean, we've got, we're across the globe here and, and, we've, and we're still collaborating, which is fantastic. Uh, across other uh, uh, schools would be huge, I think. I mean, the more we can improve our profession by all learning together, why not take advantage of it? I, again, I don't exactly know how that looks, but it's something that uh, uh, last year we had to do an accreditation at Camosun, and I got to, I was lucky enough to be on uh, like the student board of it. And one of the points that got brought up was like, how can we have more collaboration in between years of our school? You know, like, mm-hmm. so first year, second year, third year, fourth year, and the same idea. I mean, if you can get fourth years teaching for, well, aiding first years across the the country i think it's like only only positive things can come from it um it, it could be first years helping first years second years helping second years whatever like a chat group or, or maybe just some sort of uh like a podcast just like this just for people to share their experiences and talk and ask questions i mean 
the more you can do that, the more communication, the more collaboration you can inspire. It's just, just going to skyrocket our profession forward, I think. Absolutely. And on that note, I'll do a little plug for the WFATT, which is a world, <laughs> world Congress coming to Winnipeg in 2022, we hope, right? So uh, I have no allegiance to anybody in this, but I think that's a big one. I think that's a big one where you can celebrate this profession, um, right? Which is which is the, the, the federation that's responsible for um, athletic training and therapy, right? The World Federation. So um, maybe in 2022, we all get together uh, different countries. We come, we keep coming up with some good <laughs> ideas on how to, to bridge, uh, build bigger bridges right from from Canada to different parts of the world and I think it's coming I think you know the more conversations we have and you touched on it this this pandemic is forcing us to do some things that we've never done before let's get a little bit more comfortable being uncomfortable start having some conversations across the pond um, and really start building this thing outwards so um, uh, I'll just jump back to Ireland for uh, one more here uh, Adam Taryn do you like this idea of sort of branching out and, and collaborating uh, across our profession? Absolutely. That it would be such, um, it would be so good to have other people like experiences, just the fact that you're here, I'm here. Like it's, um, it's one thing, let alone like you could be in the same room with another person who is the same class, same course, everything. But to have people who can share experiences to be across the globe is amazing. It would be a great opportunity for everyone. Yeah. And, and so that was the impetus for this one. Uh, I started talking to you, I think, back in October and tried to lay this thing out. And uh, and then Mike and Zach and, and Adam uh, came on board. And I, I think this is the beginning of something that I'd like to sort of organize and structure. And maybe you guys can, uh, if you have some extra time, we can talk about this into the future and, and sort of building this thing out, even uh, in a rather informal setting, doesn't necessarily have to be through the schools. I've taken a bunch of notes from listening to you guys and chatting with you guys here. Uh, we're up against it, getting close to an hour. Uh, um, I wanted to thank you again um, for being here, for your time, for your sharing. I think, again, uh, we don't have to be the top acknowledged expert in a field to share our story and, and you guys sharing your experiences and your vision and your knowledge and, and what you've taken um, to date goes a long, long way for, for me. It goes a long, long way for each other and for our profession. So uh, again, thank you so much for being here. It's session 54. Um, first star, let's chat and athletic therapy round table brought to you by mobility tape, the only heat activated kinesiology tape on the market uh once again the shot you don't want to take if you haven't listened to it or checked it out yet uh fully public access full public access through the youtube channel um it's a, a seminar in mental health and addiction in the sports space similar to this just kicking down the doors on some of the conversations that we feel are are extremely important and need to be happening to sort of continue um some momentum in areas that matter you guys matter. You are the future of our profession. This has been the student experience. This has been amazing. Uh, I know a little all over the place and dogs barking. You hung with me on this. I appreciate it. Um, I'll thank you guys for this. Uh, a lot of thank yous coming in here um, for everybody picking this up. Thank you so much. Share with your friends, share with your colleagues, share with your teammates, share it with the barking dogs. The more conversations, the better. This profession is one that is undermined on a regular basis, but at the same time, once people know about it, it is appreciated um, through and through. So uh, Taryn, Adam, Zach, Mike, I will wish you good morning, good afternoon, good night. Uh, session 54 comes to a wrap. Thank you so much. Uh -huh.